Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Today we're looking at this Sony STR3800 receiver. This was uh, sent to me by a viewer and uh, I have no idea what's wrong with it. Uh, he says it just spontaneously stopped working, doesn't power up. So we're going to tear into it and uh, figure out what's wrong with it. Because nominally it was well packed, it looks pretty nice. So uh, I'm going to see what's going on with it. Let's get it apart. A screw, screw here, a screw, screw there, and a couple of fa la la. And that's how we get this thing apart in the merry old land of Oz. All right. Hmm. Previous entry. Looky, looky here. RCA transistors in a Japanese unit? No, no, no. Missing fuse? No, no, no. Yeah, somebody was in here before. That's obvious. And let's see. Any signs of death? Oh, yeah. Looky, looky there. So I'm betting that those alpha transistors are shot. Oh, there's another cooked resistor. I wonder if these ones are shot. Well, there's your spontaneous stop working, but why didn't this fuse blow? Why didn't the fuse blow? Maybe the resistor opened up before the fuse? Let's see, let's get you out of here. Come on. I know you want to come out. You do. There we go. Let's see. What amperage is this? A 10 amp fuse. 10 amp fuse. Damn it. The camera won't focus. 10 amp fuse and a 3.15 amp circuit. Okie dokie. Oh, here's another new fuse. What value is this one? That one's 3.15. That's good. Looks pretty shiny and new compared to the other one next to it. Just a little background. The, uh, the 3.15 was what they called the warranty fuse. It's not a fuse that you could obtain in a regular... Uh, supply store environment so you didn't see them very much you can definitely tell this is a basic receiver one giant monolithic board you've got a capacitor that's a dual capacitor uh, you've got all these kind of crummy purple capacitors these are not the Matsushitas these are uh, Sam Hua yeah I'm thinking this was the budget machine uh, the amplifier comes out easy enough. But I'm betting here a lot of this stuff's cooked. So let's get the meter and, and take a look. That way we'll be able to know uh, what's going on with this thing. Okay, so let's look between the test point here, which is one of the emitters, and the collector and see if we have it short. I'm betting we do. No, that one's not shorted. At least not collector or emitter. Ah, but that one is. That one shorted. That one's still alive. And that one's dead. Oh, wait, no. Oh, but it's trying to be dead. Oh, what is that? Hang on. Yeah, so there's a kilo-ohm between the uh, emitter and collector there. That ain't going to work. Whereas that one's 13 meg, that's about right. And again, this one's a dead short. And that one's got high resistance. Okay, so this thing's got two blown amplifiers. And this is an obvious instance where the dude just kept putting the fuses in. Yeah. 
So when you see it like this, the next thing you want to do after measuring collector uh, collector emitter, you want to measure collector base because if it's short of collector base, that one's okay. If it shorts collector base, that guarantees that the drivers are trash and you got to replace a whole bunch of stuff. Like this one here, that's a collector base short. That one's this this whole stage here. You replace the outputs, you replace the drivers, which are these guys. Class A and current sync are probably hurt too. Uh, so that's, you take that into consideration. Direct coupled amplifiers. That one's a base collector short. That one's trash. And that one's base collector short. That one's trash. So this thing was hooked up to a an improper load. And then really, a 10 amp fuse. Sorry dude, but that's stupid. That's just freaking stupid. Bigger fuses are stupid. Stop it. God, I see this all the time. And there was a recent discussion that bothered me too. Bigger fuses are not okay. So, this is really totaled out. The time that it's going to take to replace these output transistors, the drivers, the pre-drivers, these resistors, the bias pots are probably trash too. These are probably open. In fact, I bet they are open. Let's see if they are. And let's just go between this and the center. Yep, that one's open. That one's open. So this went down so hard that it destroyed the emitter resistors. That's probably what stopped the new fuse from blowing as these opened up. Uh, the base resistors opened up. These are base collector shorts, which means all the drivers are trashed. The pre-drivers are probably trash. The bias is trashed. This capacitor is bulging here, so that tells me that the problem may have gone all the way back to the differential input pair. Yeah, so this is junk. This is pretty looking junk because no one is going to want to spend $300 on an amplifier repair for something that's worth maybe $50 working used on eBay. Not going to happen. So this one hits the pile. If he wants it sent back, great. If not, it just gets scrapped. It's just not worth the time. So, yeah. Long and short of it, kiddies. Don't try to hook up 14 pairs of speakers to an amplifier. Think of an amplifier as a, a donkey and the speakers as a cart. And the lower the impedance, the heavier the cart is. And eventually the donkey is either going to give up and not pull the cart, i.e. protection circuit kicks in and you can't do squat, or the donkey is going to fall over dead in this scenario because there was no protection circuit here. And then on top of it, the person put a giant fuse in and blew up the machine. So this is junk. Anyways quick diagnostic video for you. Thanks for watching. More stuff to come.